It's Tuesday 6th of August, late tournament, titillating Tuesday, and something happens which we very rarely see across the entire chess calendar year. Magnus Carlsen paired here with Hikaru Nakamura. Everything you saw in the title, the thumbnail, was genuinely uttered by a top blitz player. More on that to come. I'd have brought you it yesterday, but I was out celebrating with a few friends. It was my birthday. The big 2-1 finally rolled around. That's why I couldn't get it up, but thanks for the well wishes. We're diving right in here. Magnus goes knight f3, and Hikaru takes the center. And how about this? Magnus in an uno reverso, uses Hikaru's opening against him. Builds the b3 banana hammock. What disrespect. It's like playing him in a pineapple shirt. Hikaru now takes the center by pushing the c-prawn. Magnus goes e3 and what a pawn structure. It's like the undulating foothills of your favorite national park. Couple little hills there, or mini mountains. Hikaru develops his pony and Magnus now pins, preparing to give up the bishop, but it fits with this dark square domination theme. And what do we see now from Hikaru? Pawn to f6, a move that makes Hans Feingold wince because you expose the king, it's lifted the kilt, but the point is, well, we're going to see. Because after knight c3, Hikari builds the big black center, as he likes to call it. Daenerys, mother of dragons, guiding those three down the board. And Magnus now takes. Always recapture towards the center, especially when you have no choice. Bishop a3 now played, not hitting this diagonal. What's that all about? Well, this pawn's weak, about to be targeted. Hikaru fights back. He wins the symmetry prize. He's also stopping this king from castling here and it sets a trap because if you go d3, well then the queen streams out to a5, hits both of these. If you now drop back to defend, then you run into d4 and the knight's dropping off the board. So instead, Magnus plays knight a4, targeting c5. The queen streams out to defend, and now how about this? For an explosive move, Magnus plays pawn to c4. Excellent stuff, interrupting the scope of this bishop, trying to castle one day. Now he Hikaru takes, gives himself the Irish pawns here, get on to Ask Jeeves if you've never heard that one, genuine name for the triple pawns, and Magnus just calmly goes queen c2, allowing Hikaru to gobble gobble on a second pawn if he wants. But the point is that after pawn recaptures, you're going to win this one back. There's huge pressure here, white with tons of compensation, even better in this position. So that wasn't played. Hikaru maintains the tension here. He should go bishop e7, just carry on developing, according to Stock Squid. But he plays bishop b5, trying to mangle Magnus's structure and stopping b takes on c4, or the knight drops on a4. But now Magnus does what he loves. He goes for queen c3, trying to enter an endgame. He wants chess nirvana, but Hikaru ducks it, doesn't want to play the endgame goat. Instead, he goes queen a6. He could have taken just a different game, and now Magnus wins back that pawn on c5. Anytime black tries to hold on to the pawns, basically, swapping the queens, you just can't do it. Too many weak ones. And now what should you do? Again, order of the day, developing a piece. Apparently, it's quite a complex position. Hikaru takes here, however, looking to mess up the structure. But now Magnus takes here. Of course, the knight no longer defending the bishop on c5. We get king recaptures, takes on a4. Yes, a4 is weak, but so is c4. c6. Now we see knight e7. Hikaru could have captured, but he holds off. Both of these pawns now go into the blender and the white queen so powerful that black's got to chop it off. You can't live with it. We've entered an end game. Hikaru shivering as he bong clouds the king. So does Magnus and he now activates one of his cannons. He's actually first to the punch, invading on the second, looking for some kebab action. But Magnus has got it covered with rook a4 and he pressures Hikaru's a7 pawn. He's got slightly the better of it in this end game. Hikari with the extra pawn island, babysitting that weakness. So king e6 played. 
anyone for a knight maneuver, a5 on the board, and knight d3. The rook on b2 is rattled, has to give ground, but it does now cover this pawn, frees this one up to activate, and after knight c5 check, king d6, Magnus now centralizes this pony. What a position. He's playing with the pressure, and this is a great move now, just spotting Hikari's ideas. Just a small one, he pushes on to a3, takes control of b4, before Hikaru can play rook b4, try and trade a set of rooks, maybe connect his pawns and get rid of those two islands. Magnus not allowing it, so Hikaru goes rook d8. If he'd started with f5, by the way, to kick this one, well, g5 becomes available, but Magnus doesn't want to find out anyway. He goes g4, plowing fourth with Gary. What a move, just squeezing, securing his knight. We now see the king slide into b6. Magnus stacks the two towers a la Tolkien and now we see rook b3 rook b2 apparently better but this is blitz chess a3 is targeted but great move by Magnus he goes forward with knight c5 hits the rook and sets the trap because if you take this pawn you've just given up control of the b file bang check and where to go with the king you can't step backwards of course you're still in check or forwards if you come to c7 you can walk into this simple fork that's losing on the spot and if you go this way well a6 not possible the knight covers here then there's this check the knight's dropping from the board it's carnage so what hikari realizes is he has to meekly return stay on the b file but magnus can now start making progress he lands on that monster outpost what an octopus stoctopus purring the pawn now covered and h4 magnus carlson grinding like a grandma he's doing his nation proud now we see g6 on the board and rook one to c2 covering that second rank some more good nudgy waiting blitz chess he's holding the cards magnus carlson and after rook c8 he decides it's time to play one you can go f3 or g5 or rook c one the preferred moves of stock barnacle but magnus goes f4 given the miss but not really it's a great move especially as hikaru responds you should take on f4 he centralizes this bastion here but allows magnus to take and set up three lots of pawn islands that is awkward almost as bad as falling off your chair after losing a game of blitz chess knight c5 now from magnus i mean that is a dominant piece just killing hikaru he's getting suffocated rook c7 played the knight stumbles back to d3 but hits an important pawn Sure, you can advance, but then you give up some monster squares, and in fact, you could just take even. That would probably be better. So knight f6 is played, opens the rook defense, and also hits the pawn on g4. But Magnus shows more just exceptional recognition, using the board as his canvas, and goes pawn a4, playing on a flank, but kicking a rook, which is defending the center. It tries to hold on to this pawn here, but can do so no longer after pawn e4 this one defending from the knight's attack the rook's got to go rook d4 playable but this one chosen by hikaru rook d4 preferred which is why it gets the miss and now magnus just crashes through and defends g4 what harmony rook e6 played of course to try and move remove the defender of this pawn and d4 now preferred by the engine even though you give this one up Magnus goes for this however, you take my knight, I take yours, but Hikaru really should have done this. Then at least there's a weak pawn here which you can try and round up, this is one kind of sample line. Game goes on, Magnus still better, especially with these connected ones. More active king, weak pawn here, okay that was the way to go. But Hikaru sidelines his own knight here, forgetting the old adage, a knight on the rim is a terrible loser with no prospects that really needs to assess its life choices magnus can now push with d4 dominating the center and after rook d6 the king even advances in this knight really struggling for squares even when you get here then where are you going it's firing blanks absolute jaffa now we see rook e7 pressuring 
that night and Magnus just crashes through here. You might ask, why did it move here? I have no idea. I didn't explore the line. What if you go rook e6? Okay, then rook c5 apparently. One of the big problems is this knight is rotating to c4 and then this one's hugely under fire. It's just pressure, pressure, pressure. Instead, we see this. Magnus crashes through. The king goes after this pair of rooks go into the blender and after rook c5, we see a resignation because this knight is rotating to c4. You're picking up the pawn and black's got nothing to fight against it. This is too many prawns. It's prawn again and Magnus would take the game. Hikaru resigns. Magnus Carlsen goes for chess immortality in the words of Hikaru because he goes 11 out of 11 in the tournament. Clean sweep and Hikaru even called this a technical masterpiece. I hope you enjoyed. For another exceptional Magnus game, check out the video on screen and thanks very much for watching. Cheers.